Right, well, nice to see that some people are actually interested in documentation. If you show the right documentation, even better. Um, so yeah, I'm here to talk about documentation. I wanted to start by saying this is intended to be a discussion-oriented session. I want to hear from you what we should be doing with documentation, what you're going to do to help. Um, if you're counting on me to to entertain through the whole thing, then um, then we're going to have a very short session, which is fine as well. Um, so, you know, overall I would say that the kernel has a lot of documentation. The documentation directory is quite big. Some of it's quite good, some of it, well, you know, I mean, it's, that's the way of saying it. But I think we can do better. And so there are things I want to talk about, about how we might perhaps do a little bit better. Um, this is, really this is a screenshot of the, of the Python documentation page, your top page. And the main thing to notice really is just that it looks relatively clean. You can see what you find, like library, language reference, in usage, so on and so forth. It's all pretty clear around, you know, whatever you're looking for, you know pretty well which direction you should go to try to find it. So um, I pulled up the front page of our documentation, it's found on kernel.org, and it looks like that, which, you know, I mean, looks kind of neat until you start sort of looking at it. Um, we lead off with licenses, which I'm sure is the first thing that anybody needing to find kernel documentation is looking for. Um, we may not want to do this. It's safe for me to say this because I know Thomas is busy defending his work in his other section and won't give me grief for, um, for talking about that. So that's a start, but then just go and tell your browser you want to print that front page. The, of our documentation, 26 sheets. That's our front page. That's our main directory. Try to find documentation. We'll print to a, a small book in its own way. It's, it's not going to be really an easy way to find what it is that, that you're looking for. I think that we're, we're missing a little bit in the way of structure there. rather than um, by the convenience of the maintainers who are writing it. And we've made some progress. We have these various books, as you might call them. You know, the admin guide, the process manual, our core API manual, um, and so on. So some of these work a little bit better than others. But we've started to impose at least some structure on the documentation as a whole, even if, as I like to describe it, we've taken one big messy pile and turned it into a bunch of smaller um, almost equally messy piles, but we're starting on that. And so that is progress. Um, this is a proposal that I put out a week or so ago for a redone front page in the way I think that we could do the front page of our documentation. I didn't get a lot of comments on this, 
um, and mostly got Torsten, who took a look at it. But otherwise, nobody else really had much to say about it, which I take as absolute permission to do anything I want. Um, but I would actually like it if people would look at this. Not, I will put out a new version of it um, sometime after I'm done going to conferences. Then we can do it again. Because again, this is our introduction. This is how you know new developers or somebody who's trying to figure out something with the kernel comes in and sees what we have. I think it should be the best that we can make it. It's the starting point for the structure overall that, that I would like to see us impose on our documentation. So I, if anybody has looked at it and has comments now, I would sure like to hear them. Um, otherwise, I would like to hear them on the mailing list afterwards. So where did the licensing go? <laughs> where did the licensing go? Um, well, we don't want it to be, like you said, number one, but it's got to be there, and it doesn't fit into users. users. Yeah, um, I ended up kind of putting it in the bottom where I shoved things I didn't know quite what to do with. Perfect. Um, you know, it's important. It needs to be there somewhere. But not everything can be on the front page. Licensing arguably should be, but um, I don't know. But it certainly doesn't need to be the first thing that we do. Could we collect status uh, stats on which ones get visited most often and then prioritize based on where people are going? Um, I could talk to Constantine and see if I could get that kind of stats for the, you know, for the version that's hosted on kernel.org. Of course, we have no stats on what people are reading on their own systems out of the kernel tree. That sort of thing. I organized it, putting the process manuals first, mostly because the one that we refer people to more than anything else is submitting patches. Correct. Yeah, we're always telling people to read that um, and read it again because they didn't read it the first time, <laughs> that sort of thing. So I started with that. Torsten was actually saying that we should have the, the user oriented the stuff first because it's the kernels for the users. So um, we can argue about that okay. and the organization. I think it doesn't matter that much as long as it is, you know, sparse enough and focused enough that you can, that people can find what they're after, even if they have to scroll half a page. Uh, my comment on the ordering on that is, we already have users, a lot of them, but we want to get more developers. So let's leave the developer stuff at the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, plus one on heading in this direction of you know, segmenting things. Um, and so I'd, I'll go deep, deep, deep dive. I missed this came through in the last week. Um, but one of the areas that we're working on in, there's people that will probably contribute, is in the safety and the analysis information on how to look at the kernel from a safety perspective. Where would that fit into this type of structure, you think? So uh, what sort of analysis or information I didn't quite catch? Safety. So basically how you're sort of structuring, how do you go about creating, co collecting traces? How do you go about analyzing the workload? How do you go about looking at the architecture of the kernel and some of the interactions and interferences? Well, first we have to actually have that kind of documentation. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> so, so the question here is, if we can start to get the ELISA community participate, you know, as they're doing the analysis, giving them a place to put this stuff, we can collect it, but it doesn't fall quite into those categories you've put mm -hmm. in there. I mean, and the closest so, would be the, the process manual for now, but we perhaps could really make a good separate how to do kernel development section, which is a little bit different than... Yeah, this, that's different than what I'm asking for, which is how to analyze a kernel. Well, yeah, here. Oops. Yeah, don't throw that one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that can just be an extra section if we have enough content for that. Well, like I think we've got, a, we've got a, we, like, I'd like to get a structure so that we can get people to put content in. Yeah, or can we maybe have a section for like manuals and how to, and uh, people can then put like specific things like how to analyze crashes, how to uh, do some other specific things. Yeah, tasks, that basically the analysis really nice. tasks. Like, you know, we've got a lot of tools for with, that developers are using for doing tracing and debugging and testing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where can we make sure that they can find this type of thing? Like, one of the things we don't have is, hey, I want to help with the kernel. I don't want to be a developer. I want to be testing it. 
Mm -hmm. they, where do they find that? Yeah, I mean, for the moment, you find it here in this development mm -hmm. tools and, and processes section. You know, if you know, the nice thing about this is we can change it. You know, once yeah. we oh, yeah. have the documentation, if it doesn't fit, then we can find a structure that mm -hmm. it will fit into. Yeah, well, one thing I suggested in my reply is uh, that the structure should help uh, making sure what uh, uh, what you write. Because it's what you're asking for, is it something for users of the kernel or developers of the kernel? Okay, so yeah, I, I think we, we you replied to my mail, so maybe we really read uh, users, uh, uh, API for user space and, the, and multiple sections for developers, but not too much because otherwise it gets too messy again. So if you go back to the Python page, you'll notice that there was two columns Right. On this page, the right side has basically no information. Yeah. So some of that... we make one developers and one users, if that's our main two groups, and then we'll like stuff, you know, legal down the footnotes. Yeah, we could do that to um, to change this requires doing um, Sphinx theming work, which we can do, but somebody needs to actually do it. Um, yeah. yeah, and it's going to look like crap in VI. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, that, that would be a good thing to do. We're not stuck. I mean, we're definitely not stuck with the read the docs theme, which the original page I showed you used. Uh, I'm using a different one here, which I'm not really saying is better. But the one we have is really ugly. And I think we could um, do better. And while we're at it, we can make it really match what our needs are. I guess the other thing is, um, if if you look at the modern interfaces, they have like the three lines or they call it the hamburger or whatever and we could collapse it over to give a full view of what's there and we could and then we could have two columns that are bigger right and yeah we can work at that again you know there you can do this remember we're dealing with a big body of plain text documentation this is just what sphinx renders it to yeah and so we we can change that but somebody has to put some effort into doing that and yeah, Given that we've kept our horrific, ugly theme for years with nobody really trying to change it, um, the energy for that seems to be relatively low. Yeah, people need to remember that we have multiple goals here. Uh, right now, one of the goals is that we have a single set of RST files, which should be easily readable in plain text if somebody just reads it using a text pager, that it can be formatted into a single big printed book although I don't know how often people actually do that, and that it can be rendered as HTML. Now, we can revisit whether or not that needs to be a requirement, but that is one of the reasons why it drives the current look, right? And so there are all sorts of really modern things we could do with web design, but it might compromise some of those other goals, and maybe we should do that for the front page, right? But that's a discussion that we should probably have. Well, that problem's probably already solved elsewhere too, right? Like you, we were looking at the Python page, what did they do for that? Uh, is there other examples that people like better or worse? So um, go look at the Zephyr page, okay? Which is another, like say another mm -hmm. OS, and it's got a much cleaner structure to navigate into um, and has some of the concepts. On the other hand, it doesn't have some of the things we're looking for from the Elisa side. So. Mm -hmm. Six of one, half dozen of another. But if you're looking for an example of one way it could be structured, that's one to look at too. Yeah, to, uh, to a certain extent, we can do our web page design and our theming independently of the plain text documentation and keep both. Um, I mean, we do need to keep both. I think the plain text side of it is a pretty hard requirement. Um, certain people, I think, would probably bomb my house from orbit if I tried to, <laughs> to get away from that. Um, so, but we do have some flexibility there, but it takes somebody with the time and the effort to do, do that work. And, you know, this seems like a really ideal job for somebody who's not a kernel developer to help with the process. It seems like we ought to be able to find someone who could do that, but um, that person hasn't come along. Right. The other topic that's pretty hot is security. How are we showing the security and how to do best security best practices here? Yeah, we don't, we don't have much about security in there at all. Um, again, that's, that's missing documentation. We had one in the back there for a while. Yeah. Oops, all right. I was curious, as far as um, 
you know, for render targets, having the web is, I think, useful for people to find on the web. If we're trying to get folks who are um, able to help contribute that are maybe not kernel developers, um, has anyone considered kind of a more wiki style editing tool that might be able to submit patches to a mailing list? Um, well, we don't have that now, I and mean, we maybe could, but again, we need to maintain the documentation as plain text files in right. the kernel tree. Yeah. So that, that's going to make it hard, um, you know, unless we have somebody acting as some sort of a go-between. So to answer the security stuff, we don't really have best practices on use, um, but most of the security documentation is uh, using the LSMs or APIs within the kernel for security stuff. We just don't have any place for like high level kernel use uh, and security best practices currently. Uh, I, I don't want to interrupt your, your thing. I, I'm going to talk about something else. Uh, just for feedback here, um, I, I think this is looking a little better than the existing one. Uh, um, I was intrigued by the comparisons with the Python stuff, but it, I know I'm a little bit all over the map, but we definitely want the plain text. So if, if adding that third column breaks plain text, then I think we just have to back away from it and say, you know what, this, this is adequate because what you really need here is start at the top level. Does this look okay? Is when you look at this, is it not wasting too much space? Does it have the basics of what you need? And the basics of what you need are table of contents, search, and optionally that other thing someone mentioned, which is most frequently used things. Don't confuse that with table of contents. It's not a replacement for it. It would be an additional thing in addition to search, table of contents, and then maybe most recently used. But the way you find stuff in a hierarchy as a human is you, you use the hierarchy for the table of contents to find organized stuff that you can read through. You use search to find stuff that you're not quite sure what you're looking for, um, but search will miss things. Uh, and then you have something that doesn't waste too much white space as, as your documentation. This structure meets pretty much all of that. So I think my feedback is fine. You know, you're fine, go from there. From there, drilling down the level, people are kind of mixing this up. Now we worry about content. Well, that's easy. That's just submitting patches to reorganize what you have here. If you want to, uh, and we can do that continually. If you think this isn't organized quite right, you just submit a patch and it changes a few text files and bam, it, it's reorganized and you're fine, you're looking good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, and, and yeah. I have one more thing, which is um, there's continual confusion, uh, valid confusion about whether this document, who this documentation is for. And there's obviously two main groups. There's kernel developers, and then there's people who are not kernel developers. They, they're either trying to test it or they're trying to use it or call into it or understand it we could do a better job at clarifying that. That's what the third column Liam was proposing was basically splitting out entirely. You don't have to do that. You can just make it a separate table of contents section. But if we promoted that concept all the way up to that left column, that would help mm -hmm. because then you go kernel developers, you know, everybody else, and then everyone knows where to go. And there's no more of this confusion of who you're writing the documentation for. So that's. Yes. I'm, there, there is a guide to writing kernel documentation. Yes. Yes, it does, and and tries to direct people towards. Our, our related goals, such as minimal markdown or markup of, of the, the text and that sort of stuff. And one of the reasons we have the goal of the plain text is that, again, there's two key, very distinct groups of people that are using this documentation. And one of them is the kernel developers. And those folks spend most of the time uh, in the code. And the code has a, uh, the, the source code tree has a subdirectory called capital documentation. So they can just you know, without changing their environment, they can open that up in their text editor and they're there and they get what they need, they get out, they're done. They don't generally go all the way to an HTML page unless they're on Google and they couldn't find it anywhere else and they somehow got back to their own source code. Well, <laughs> yeah, so I think, like I say, you're organizing now a bit more by personas and I think the main message you were giving was you have to have the personas clearer. 
right. of who we're aiming each of the parts of documentation for. And I'm completely in line with that. Well, me too. Me too. That's been the goal for quite a while. It's, it's, it's a long process to get there. Kernel developers like to put all of their documentation in one file. So you know, here's the API for your IOCL calls, and here's how it works internally, and here's how you build it, and all that stuff, all in one file. And it's been really hard to convince them to separate that out. So usually the way I work is I have this open on one screen and my code open on another screen. And then I have like tabs also to other versions of the kernel open in like free electron or something that, that scan the source that I can search. Mm -hmm. So that like my use case is like, I need to see this and I have another, actually it's a whole other computer with code on, <laughs> on it. Uh, and then like multiple tabs looking at more source code. Um, so when I go to this, it, it would be beneficial if I didn't have to go to, to, you know, another site to get even to an index copy of the kernel. Uh, so like if there was like linkage between here's the, I don't know, I'm, I'm looking at this, this driver interface and it's like, well, okay, this document seems okay. Uh, but what does the code say in this particular version for this particular bug? that I'm working on. And so I can click and go to another site that has that. So I don't have to get stash, get pull, get the right version, and then find out that actually it was this other slightly different version or, or whatever. So it, it, it would be beneficial to not only have a developer uh, section that has the documentation, but also the ability to get to the code for that particular section from the docs. Okay, I hadn't thought about that. That's probably doable. I mean, somebody's gonna need to stand up an Elixir um, instance somewhere or something like that um, to do it, but it should be doable. And I can see how that would be useful, yes. All right, well, if we've kind of run that into the ground. I'll move on from there. Um, I mean, this is really kind of this, the same questions we've been talking about, about how we continue to improve the structure of it and fill in the gaps that we have. Um, because as I've heard people say, we have a lot of tribal knowledge in this com community, a lot of knowledge that's in people's heads that um, has not been set down in documentation. And as these people, you know, eventually decide that maybe they don't want to spend all their time on the external reviewing patches, we need to transfer that knowledge. We need to take it down. So I don't really know how we do this. At um, LSM earlier this year, the idea was raised that if you put in a structure, a documentation structure with the gaps in it, that will motivate people to fill those gaps. And, um, you know, because all they have to do is kind of fill in the blanks saying, you know, write the description here. So. Um, this happened in that that Willie promptly ran out and put together a nice structure for the memory management documentation like that, that sort of thing. So I went to, just to see where things are and then my kernel looked and just sort of clicked on one and um, and that's kind of what what all those gaps still look like. So it hasn't yet started to happen, but maybe this kind of magic takes a little time. But if we have any thoughts on how we can get people to fill that stuff in, um, sure. So I would say uh, the tribal knowledge, transferring that is very important. And as I mentor, I'm mentoring 19 people right now this fall. So when I go and see where can I point the documentation, um, I, have, I, have, I struggle finding places where to say, hey, where can you learn when they ask? Where can we learn about memory management, for example? Mm -hmm. um, it is hard for me to go and point out. And then I keep saying, well, code is the, the same thing we say. Code is our documentation. And it would be easier if we were to have um, some documentation also for new developers, um, new people, not kernel insiders. A lot of our documentation tends to be somewhat focused on um, expert level documentation, a lot of it. 
Mm -hmm. So you have to have a lot of know-how to even understand some of our documentation. So I think that is important as well. Yeah, I agree. We have um, some pretty good process level documentation for new developers, but not technical. Yeah. Maybe to what you said, you say you mentor a lot of people and uh, I agree that newbie documentation isn't really where it should be, but uh, when those newbies to learn about those things, uh, could they maybe submit patches to the documentation because they are the ones to properly understand what is missing. They can uh, fill in the gaps that other newbies might be missing that are not obvious to people who are embedded in the kernel process a lot. So we, we have a, a, a bug tracker that I, I don't think very many people look at. Yeah. Would, would there be like a way we could make bugs for like things that need documented and um, so we, let me comment on what Veronica just said I have experimented with that having mentees do documentation um, what happens with that approach is it is a great thought right initially it appears uh, for for other than the uh, some of the not so complex patches it becomes harder for them to document because it almost feels like you need to have a little more in-depth knowledge to document. So what happens is the hand-holding process um, that we have um, to get the patches in a way we want them, the content and uh, everything, it takes a lot more re a lot more work, definitely. So I do ask, um, the mentees to use documentation as a means to uh, learn um, how to learn the process of submitting patches. And some of them graduate. One of my mentees went and did last uh, spring, he figured out the white space in Japanese uh, version and he submitted a bunch of patches. He actually cleaned up a lot of the Japanese. So some of them do that. Um, but in some cases um, that becomes, and there is a bug so, yes, I think it would be a good idea we, if we have a to-do type of thing um, to have documentation needs. So create, and then we can use that and then have a new developers pick from that. So. Yeah, I, I don't think you need like the to-do. Somebody could take something off that and they don't necessarily need to be the expert. You just need somebody to drive the process, I think. Right. Well, so some of the sections have a lot of subtleties in it. And what I'm kind of thinking is we try to get the ELISA architecture team as they are analyzing parts of the kernel and the implications and how things work and, at them, and ask them to fill in the gaps as would be a group that has, mo has motivation to really provide that type of information because they need it for themselves. Now the challenge is keeping it up to date as parts of the kernel change. Mm -hmm. And so the question is if they put something in for a subsection after they've done the analysis, can we count on the maintainers to review it for your accuracy? And then no, well, no, like I say, uh, you know, can we make this a positive experience for multiple people here and get useful results out? Can we have doc tests? <laughs> I, I mean, some maintainers will do that. Others yeah. um, will not. It's, it's all variable. But so, I would say just to say, continue. Yeah. Yeah, some people can show the pattern properly, that would help. I would just add to on this theme that one of the best ways to really learn about how something works is to make yourself explain it to others. Right. Um, having made a living this way for decades, um, I understand this very well. Yeah, um, so I, one of the things that I found was uh, on my team, I recently had to bring uh, two new uh, employees up to speed on EXP4 development. And GCE XFS test is actually one of the primary ways that we do test-driven development. And having someone new, that sort of beginner's mind, was really, really helpful in finding out where the gaps were. So I asked both of them to like give me notes about what they were confused about, or when they asked me questions, I made notes. And then we fix the documentation. Um, and so that may be an approach where if you're working at a company and over the period of nine months, I think this takes longer than a Google Summer of Code type experience, you know, you're bringing a new MM developer up to speed. 
have them take notes about what they needed to ask and then use that to drive the documentation. I think that's, that's probably gonna be one of the best ways to do that. And then as a bonus, maybe that new developer also gets introduced into you know, upstream development. Hmm. So <clears throat> one thing we have for KUnit, and this probably works a little better for a tool than a general subsystem, is the first section of the documentation is a getting started guide. And maybe if we can have for more subsystems, the first section of, of their documentation be getting started with this subsystem, doesn't have to teach you everything or how every little bit works, but here's at least an entry point. I mean, requiring that just creates a whole new bunch of gaps to fill, but uh, it could be an interesting way of providing that entry point. Another thing we could do here is like when you get an empty topic, if we have some files that are tagged against it, could we have a bot pick up the last few or even just generate it from um, Git, the commit logs, and, and just, or just put the one-liners in here with a link to the Git commit logs so at least you have a starting point of, hey, there's actually a, something here I can read through Maybe it doesn't explain how virtual contiguous memory allocation works, but it, these were the last few bugs that were fixed, or this is the last feature that went in. And then people will say, hey, there's, you know, there's Git logs for this stuff too that I could maybe leverage to figure out how this insanely complicated system works. That might work at something like a driver level. I think it's gonna be really hard to log every memory management change. And well, I don't mean <laughs> oh. I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't mean every one. I mean, like, just have a running thing of the last 10 or 15 or something, right? I mean, it, and, and that would probably also help for uh, how did this change last since I was here? And you're like, oh, there, there I am. I'm the fifth one down, and these are the four things that happened. Uh, I just want to provide a, a counterpoint view, uh, which is that uh, I, I, I caution strongly against trying to auto-generate documentation. Uh, documentation is hard. Uh, you'll find that when, when you go to create documentation, only about one out of 10 of your developers will succeed in creating documentation that's durable and, and generally useful. Everyone can create content and ideas, like Ted was saying, is fantastic. You know, uh, I always make the new folks uh, go in and correct the documentation and tell me, like you said, ideas for new docs. But actually writing a paragraph or two up here that doesn't turn into six pages of, of noise or a few paragraphs of unreadable stuff. That's actually hard, it's a human activity. If you try to auto-generate it, you will hurt yourself and you'll generate a lot of white space, a lot of noise, a lot of things that should be in other systems like Git. Uh, so, so my feedback is uh, never do that. So. <laughs> well, hold on now, I don't mean generate the text. I'm, I'm actually saying link to the Git, the uh, Git ID, like just one liner and then you click on that and it brings you to the code. And if your developers aren't writing decent git commit logs, then that's another problem, right? And I feel like there should be some explanation as to how at least their fix to the code went in. Or why, yeah. <laughs> uh, on that, I think what we really need an accessible thing is the mapping between this file of code, this file of documentation, because that's not obvious you know the code might be in some random directory the documentation tree is organized differently particularly if we're reorganizing documentation that mapping needs to be somewhere and it might not be perfect but something should exist i have a feeling what you are losing context why do you actually need documentation because once you start to document files specific files and explain it it is unclear to me, at least for the develop, current developer, to whom you are, you are going to, who will read it? Uh, I would like to see in documentation general concept, so, something that is not going to change. I don't want to see Git log I, because I have Git. I don't want to see Git commit because, because I have Git. I know how to compare different folders and different revisions. Really, well, it's person, not something that I would, so the person, at least kernel developer would look, would, would, okay, would be happy so, to see in virtual contiguous memory allocation section. Okay, so the person who wants to look at the documentation and understand what's going on, 
is someone who's basically working uh, using Linux inside some of the SpaceX and things going that are mission critical, that they need to understand a whole system and Linux as part of a system so they can do the right safety analysis so that people don't die. Those are the people that care about this stuff. Uh, I will give you an example for um, my experience, uh, which I had, I think, five years ago or maybe more, when I was working on Mori Hot Plug. In general, if you're looking at the code, it is to some extent self-explaining, but when I went deeper and deeper, I was, um, it was much more too difficult to understand what is going on. At some point, even I was not able to understand why these, uh, for example, variables get these values or something like that. So I think that somebody who designed, for example, memory hot plug should explain clearly why this uh, was done in that way or something like that. So I think that this documentation is for new developers, mostly who are looking at the new code. This is important, I think. This is so basically, we, the documentation is not for the kernel developer experts, because if you are expert, then you already know those things. You don't need the documentation. It's for everybody else who doesn't belong in the uh, I would disagree <laughs> with that, yeah. <laughs> so we, 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 we only have about 10 minutes left of this session. And um, I, the, we, we, I, I suggest that everyone goes and, and reviews the uh, the matrix chat from from the last half hour because uh, we actually have experts in documentation who are who are getting annoyed at you. Um, <laughs> those of you who are suggest uh, those of you who are, who are pointing out problems, absolutely. Uh, those of you who are suggesting solutions, you perhaps don't know as much as you think you do. Um, uh, Zusa, in particular, has, has has some excellent critiques of some of the solutions being proposed here. Um, um, I don't know if Zusa is going to join uh, herself, but um, she she has some suggestions um, that uh, we we make it more possible for people like her who are documentation experts to contribute. And maybe they're not particularly comfortable sending patches. Perhaps they're not particularly com comfortable with our workflow. Um, but this is this is a feat, this is an area that has expertise, and we are not availing ourselves of it. Um, speaking for myself, I've tried to get companies to pay tech writers to help out with this, and I've never been successful. Uh, she suggests that we use uh, Google Summer of Documentation. Um, we, we we should also listen to people who are new. Uh, Noor Hussain has been uh, making comments about how he's been trying to... Uh, I, I, I think Noor is a he. Anyway, uh, Noor, Noor has been suggesting how... Um, how new developers get up to speed, and it's all, oh yes, take a look at this book from 15 years ago, and then work through the Git history from there. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, the frustrating thing is I can't argue with that, right? I mean, you know, I, 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 I was the one who created this completely empty page um, <laughs> in the hope that somebody would come along and fill it in. Um, Oh, goodness, I've, I've forgotten half the things I was going to say from the chat. Uh, I do suggest people go back through the matrix and, and, and read it because there were some really good suggestions there and there just wasn't time to fill it all in. Um, oh, one thing is that uh, Zeus suggests that we move on from RST. I know when you just got done converting to RST. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, um, um, her, her preference is for ASCII doc. I, I, I don't think we really want to get into that kind of fight right now, but at least from RST, there are tools we can use to convert to other formats. Uh, speaking for myself, I really wish we could get away from the kernel doc style, but I mean, you've heard that rant from me before, John, mm -hmm. don't hear it again. Um, I think that's all I need to summarize from the chat, but I didn't want to run out of time before the people on the chat had the chance to say something through me. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's that's fine. Um, I mean, you have about five minutes, so okay. I don't know if you want to summarize. Yeah, I'm not. That's going to be hard to summarize. Um, <laughs> I, I got through about half of my slides, but that's fine. That's um, we'll, we'll just forget the rest of them. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what to take away from from this. Um, other than that we would all like to have better documentation. And we've talked a lot about structure and organization and um, haven't really cracked the problem of how all this documentation is gonna get written. I mean, if we fill in all these gaps, I mean, somebody has written a textbook if we've done this. Um, this is not a small job. And I'm not quite sure how we're going to get that done. There are textbooks out there. Can we approach the authors to help us for one thing, but then should we keep the conversation going so we just don't talk about it once a year? Can we have some sort of forum where we can 
people who really care passionately about this and the tech writers who care about this can show up and participate. There is the Linux doc list, of course. Yeah, but, but I'm thinking that is the structure of an email list. And some people want to talk these things through and meetings. Sorry, but that's another style of cognitive evolution that people. I mean, we with. could perhaps organize an occasional meeting, yeah. Um, OK. I'm volunteering to help organize a meeting. If that is a help, we all we all love more meetings. I know. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. I mean, there's there's no point in trying to go on to the other topics I had, um, so we'll run out of it. So I, I think I'll just wind down here, um, and I thank you all. I'm glad that people are interested in this. I hope that we can take some of this interest in and push it into actual action on the documentation. Thanks. All right.